Today's year begins seven lines from the top of the Chof Gimel. You will notice a triangle, and it's also noted as number three. We are continuing with the series of incidents that we featured in our previous shiur of those who had nidorim, vows, that needed to be absolved. Rabbi Yishmuel bar Rabbi Yossi havi le nidra le mishra. Rabbi Shmuel had taken a vow and he needed it to be absolved. Also le kamayhu de Rabbon, and he came to the rabbis, Omru le, and they asked him, Nadras adaita dahi, when you took your vow, when you made your vow, did you do so uh, with such and such and such in mind? And the hope being, like we discussed in our last year, that he would say, No, I didn't have the, I didn't have that in mind and and they would be able to declare that the vow is therefore uh, annulled. However, he responded, Yes, I took the vow with such and such, such in mind. They asked him again, Well, did you, take, did you take the vow with this other matter in mind? Yes, he says that too. I, I thought about that and I made my vow anyway. This repeated itself a few times. There was an, an onlooker, a, an ignoramus, a katsra is a washman. Uh, he saw that the Rabbonon were, were pained by their uh, inability, they were pained or frustrated by their inability to uh, absolve Rabbi Shmuel of the vow. So he saw they were getting upset. So what did he do? Machie be'uchla de katri. He took the a a vessel that is used by watchmen by washmen. It's called an uchla de katri, and he hit Rabbi Shmuel with that. Omar. So Rabbi Shmuel, upon receiving the blow, he said, "Adaita de mochi li katra lo nadri." Uh, I when I made the vow, I didn't make it with this in mind that I would be uh, accosted by this washman. With that, he was able to provide information for his own release from the vow. So Ravacha asks Ravina, how in the world could that have worked? Hi nolad hu the lomasik adaite the mochi le katsra, nolad is literally born. It's it's new information. It's something that developed later after the vow was made. This is something that when uh, when Rishmuel vowed, he didn't have that in mind that he would be accosted by a katsra vitanino. And we have a rule that's taught in the following Tanaic source: Ain poischen lo benolad. We don't open our absolution of vows when uh, prompting the vower to, uh, let's say, to renege on the vow. We don't prompt him with information that wasn't, that couldn't have been uh, present, that couldn't have been known at the time the vow was made. The the rush. Comments ain poishim benolad the meachar sheino motsui. It's something very unusual. The lomasik adaitei shiara doverze doesn't occur to people that this kind of thing would happen. Lo havio charot elakor haneder meikoro. It doesn't constitute a form of regret to uproot the vow from its origin, from its beginning. And this is what we are striving to do when we. Our poishin, when we seek a Pesach for a vow, as we've discussed in the past, we're seeking to uproot it from its origin. But since this is something that doesn't occur to a person, uh, that such a thing would happen to him, it would be uh, information, or say, or, or something that's disqualified as being the basis of a, of a vow absolution. Omar Lay, so Ravina responds to Ravacha, he says, Hi, lav no ladhu. This isn't something that is something, let's say, we call out of the blue, something that uh, c- wouldn't couldn't have occurred to someone at the time of the vow. apikuri, 
Apikuri are are scoffers, are people that are the, the questioners of the rabbis. It's common. Shlichi means it's regular. It's common that people like that are mitzayer the rabbonon, subject the rabbonon to uh, to pain, and therefore people like this katsra who hit Rabbi Yishmael is something that does not fall under the category of no lot, and therefore it's uh, it could serve as the basis of a vow absolution. Number four, new case, the Visuda Bai have a law hahi barta. The wife of a Bai Bai had married a woman that had uh, children, in this case had a daughter from a previous marriage. Who Omar Likrevoi? Abai said, uh, when uh, when the girl gets married, I want her to marry one of my relatives. He Omra Likrevo. And she said, the wife said, I want her to marry one of my relatives. Omar law. So Abaye said, Titsuro Hanaosi Aloch I Avris Adatoi Uminsivis Lo Lekrevach. You can see quite a uh, domestic uh, struggle or quarrel arising uh, where Abaye forswore, he vowed that his wife shall not benefit from him. If she takes the initiative and has the daughter marry one of her relatives, one of the wife's relatives, Aslis Avris Avdate. I'm not sure you're surprised, but here the the wife of Abai went ahead and violated his will, went against his desire, in Siva the Krivo, and married the had the mar- the daughter marry one of her the wife's relatives. So now Habai finds himself in a predicament. So now that his, now that having been the case, the uh, the wife will not be able to benefit from Abaye and have a, 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 a basically a, an intolerable mari- uh, marital situation. Also, the Kame de Rav Yosef. Abaye comes with his problem to Rav Yosef. Omar Le Rav Yosef says, "Ilu have a Had you known that she would go against your and your will, Uminsiva la lekreva mi atrasa, and uh, gone against your will and had her had the daughter marry one of her relatives, the wife's relatives, would you have made that netter? Would you have made that vow? Omar lo, I wouldn't have made that vow." Vishaya Rav Yosef. And Rav Yosef absolved Abai of the vow. Umi shori ki Is gavno. Is this allowed? The Rosh explains what the problem is. We look in the Rosh a little more than halfway down the Rosh commentary. Umi shori hadayin lasus pesach mikufa neder. Can the, uh, the sage who is absolving the the uh, client of the vow, can he use as the basis of the absolution the the neder itself, the vow itself, the lo luftoach mimokamacherin, and not to seek out a uh, absolution from from some outside cause. So that's the question: Can the can the vow itself be the basis of the absolution? Namely, he said. He, uh, uh, Rav Yosef said, had you known that she would go against your will, which that was the subject of the vow, going against your will, what well, would you have made that vow? <laughs> and uh, <coughs> Bayi says, no, I wouldn't have made it. And he says, it's okay, it's resolved. <clears throat> so is, is this allowed in Vahatanya? Yes, and we give you Tanaic precedence. In the following source, Maisebot Amechod, Shehedi Resishto Milalois Laregel was a husband that uh, was Madir made a vow that his wife cannot benefit from him if she goes to Jerusalem on the holiday? Aliyah Saregel. The Avra Al Daito and the woman, the wife, went against her husband's will, the also the Regel, and she went on Aliyah Saregel. She went to Jerusalem on the holiday. Ubalifne Rabbiosi, Omarlo, and 
the guy, the husband comes from Yosef, from Yosef, Rav Yosef says to him, Ilu yadea, al daitoch, had you known that she would go against your will, Ve'ilu regal, and, and gone to Jerusalem on the holiday, Klum Hadrasa, would you have made the vow? Omar lo, so the husband says, lo, I wouldn't have made the vow, the Hitiru, Hitiro Rav Yosef, and Rav Yosef absolved him of the vow. So you see, there's there's Tanaic precedent that that too can serve as the basis of a vow annulment. Reb Lozer ben Yankiv Oimer, af haroitz lahadiras chavero sheochal etzlo. We're continuing with the the general topic of uh, nidre ziruzin, and Reb Lozer ben Yankiv says so too. There is a case of a a man that wants his friend to eat by him. He wants his he wants to host his friend for a meal. Yomar kol neder shani osilidor hu batel. Now this Mishnah, let me point out ahead of time, is very vague. It's very hard to understand on a simple translation level. We see that we're talking about a man that wants to uh, encourage. Uh, motivate his friend to visit. And then it goes on to say something that doesn't seem to be connected at all, but uh, it says he should declare that any nether that I make, kol nether shani osilido hu botel, should be void. Ubevad shi zochur b'shasa nether. Provided he rem- remembers this condition or this uh, stipulation when he makes that vow. Well, at this point, what are we to make of things? At this point, we're going to go on a, on a, in order to set up the Gemara for the question, we're going to explain that you have a, a fellow that wants to insist, he insists on his friend eating by him, and he imposes a vow on him, and then he makes a disclaimer that any vow I make should be void. Well, so what if you what has the guy accomplished? The cave on the Omar, call Nether Shani Osi Lidor, Yehi Botel. Since the host says any netter that I make in the future shall be void. Lo Shomale Velo Asi Bahade. So the friend that he's trying to motivate to visit him through the vow isn't gonna come. He he realized that he won't be subjected to any of the vows restrictions because he, the the host has announced that the vow should be void. The Gemara continues at the top of Omid Beis. Chisure machasra v'hachi katoni. The Mishnah is presented in a in an abbreviated fashion, and I'd like to add in a deliberately abbreviated fashion. And the following is the way we're to understand the Mishnah. Roitzah sheochal etzlo chavero mesarevbo umadiro. A person that wants to motivate his friend to visit, to eat by him, and the and the guest is resisting, he's misarev, and the host Madiro imposes a vow on him. Nidre Ziruzenhu. You should realize it's not a serious vow that has any binding element to it, but rather it falls under the category of the Nidre Ziruzen that we have been discussing in the last couple of Dapim. The motivational uh, vows. Valroitze, and now a, a, a different topic. Valroitze shelo yiskaimu nidor of kol hashana, a person who uh, does not want his vows that he makes in the course of the year to be binding. So yamu barosh hashana v'yomar, he should arise on rosh hashana, the beginning of the year, and announce kol neder shani osin lidor ye botel. Any vow that I make should be void. And here we we'll just translate. Provided he remind, re- remembers this disclaimer at the time that he makes the vow in the course of the year. The Zohar, if a person knows that he made this disclaimer and makes a vow anyway, the Nidre. So he's basically uprooting the stipulation, the disclaimer, and the vow should be, yes, binding. Omar Abaye. Now we have uh, diamonds around Abaye and Rova. 
you'll see there's a machlokes between them in how to read or how to understand or what girsa to have in the Mishnah, what version to have. So Abaye says, Tani, restate the Mishnah. This disclaimer will work provided he doesn't, at the time that he makes the vow, he doesn't remember the disclaimer. So if he doesn't remember the disclaimer, when the vow is made, it's being made as a vow, and then later he'll remember the disclaimer and the vow will be void. Rava Omar Li Oilam Kide Aminon Meikara. Rava says, let's stick with the original version. Uh, that namely that when he's making the vow, he recalls that he made a disclaimer. And Hokabemayaskinon, so and what are we talking about here? How can you have a case where he he is aware of the disclaimer and Yet, he makes the vow with that awareness and the vow should be void. How could that be? We're talking about someone that made a stipulation uh, on Rosh Hashanah uh, that uh, any vow that I make in the course of the year should be void. And uh, when he makes this stipulation... Um, he knows the kinds of things that he vows. And with those kinds of things in mind, he makes this disclaimer. And then, as the year goes on, he forgot what his disclaimer was. And he, as I say, he forgot the, the details or the, 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 the basis of that stipulation. Vahashta Konodar, and now he is making a neder. Izochur Bishas Haneder, if he remembers at the time he's making the neder, that he's making the vow of Yomar, and he says, Al das horishonani no there, I am making this vow with that original stipulation in mind, namely that I, will, I don't want the vow to take hold. Nidre les be mamosha, the neder has no substance to it. The Rashi says, Vahashtaka Nodar, Izochur Bishasa Neder Shehisna. He remembers when he's making the that he made a tanai, he made a stipulation, a disclaimer. But he doesn't remember that for this very kind of neder he had made that stipulation. The Yomar and he says, Al Dasari Shonani Nodir Shelo Yehe Mekuyam Kemoshis Nesi Olav. I am making this nether with the original disclaimer in mind. Again, we repeat. He doesn't remember whether that disclaimer covered this kind of vow or not. Nidre Lesbe Mashosha, the nether then has no substance to it, doesn't get off the ground. The Gemara continues. Lo Omar, if he doesn't, uh, he doesn't announce, Al Das Orishona Ni No There that I am making this vow with the with that original stipulation in mind, Akre Litanoe Vakaim Linitre. He is thereby uprooting that stipulation. And the the vow will be binding. So again, he knows that he made some kind of disclaimer, but when he makes the vow he doesn't he doesn't, reiter- he doesn't reiterate that this vow is made on the basis that of that original disclaimer. So apparently, he, since he knows that there was a disclaimer, and he's making the vow anyway, and he's not issuing this uh, renewal of the disclaimer, so the vow does take hold. Rav Huna bar Chinana sovar le midrashe bepirka. Rav Huna intended to teach in public this procedure, this idea of a Rosh Hashanah announcement or stipulation that any vows that he takes during the year shall be void. So again, Rav Huna wanted Lemidrashe B'Pirka means to make this public. Omar Le Rava. Rava says to Rav Huna Bar Tana komistam lo stumi the Tana, 
as you might recall, when we read the Mishnah, the Mishnah made some kind of reference, but it was very unclear. We had on the top line of the Gemara, we had to say Chisuri Machasra, and if you recall, when we as pre, when we presented that, we said the Tana deliberately had left the Mishnah vague, and the Gemara the Gemara itself revealed the understanding of the Mishnah as we learned above. But from the original Tana standpoint, he didn't want it to be something very clear, very well known. And what was the uh, the thinking of the Tana in maintaining this this uh, we'll call this shroud, this this uh, uh, vagueness? What was his intent? As the Gemara said, so people should not be. Uh, lax with regard to vows. Okay, you, can, if, you can well imagine if people knew that they can make one disclaimer at the beginning of the year and with that in mind they can go ahead and, and vow their heads off throughout the year you'll see, uh, and, and not be bound the whole concept of, <coughs> of vowing would then lose all seriousness lose all meaning and people would be very lax with vows. So that was what the Tano's intention was in leaving things vague. The at darshis le bapirka, and you, Ravuna Bachinano says, Rava, you want to make this public knowledge? I, I would like to point out that the topic that we're we're discussing right now has relevance to something that we encounter every year. In the context of the uh, the very famous uh, Yom Kippur Eve prayer that everyone knows by the term Kol Nidre, uh, and in fact, during that prayer, there is a a, a type of what we call vow disclaimer that we make that we make publicly. The uh, this issue is discussed in the commentaries right here on this daf uh, you can see a discussion in the uh, in the Toysvis on uh, w- uh, on this topic with reference made to uh, the Kol Nidre prayer and in addition to the Toysvis you can see this is touched upon by the Ran commentary as well for our purposes though that's going a bit beyond the scope of our Gomorrah markings Dafyomi Shia we're just trying to whet your appetite to look into uh, this matter a little further certainly being that it's a very uh, famous prayer that a large uh, portion of the Jewish people um, take seriously so now we continue in the Gomorrah Ibai actually before we read the Gomorrah text we glance at the side we have a no say topic heading and also an indication that this lasts till Davchof Dalar Mebei. So you realize that in the context of the Gemara markings Daf Yomi Shir, we're only going to be able to begin the issue and not actually complete it. But that having been said, we have the introduction: Ha'im Hachachomim Cholkim Al Rabbos Yankiv, the Soivrim the Nidrei Ziruzim Shayachim Rak B'Mekha Chumemkar. Do the rabbis disagree with Reb Lozim and Yankiv? Reb Lozim and Yankiv, he appeared in the Mishnah at the bottom of Chof Gimel Oman Aleph, uh, adding to uh, what would be Nidre Zimruzin. So our question is, do the rabbis, in addition, besides Reb Lozim and Yankiv, do they disagree with him and, and state that Nidre Zimruzin is something that uh, we we'll call motivational vows is something that's limited to commercial transactions. Kidiktoni shneim rotsim v'shloisha, as we saw there, uh, where both were really interested in the deal, in the transaction taking place at three dinarim. Oh, af or possibly the chachamim don't disagree with the Rosh Hashanah and say that. Nidre Zeruzin, motivational vows, meaning vows that will really have no legal uh, binding power to them. That these type of motivational vows are 
relevant to areas outside of commercial transactions. So the Gemara asks the question, Do the Rabbonon disagree with him uh, uh, as far as how how far uh, Nidre Ziruzin extends? Or do they disagree and limit it to Masa Umatan, to commercial transactions? Or do they not disagree and say that Nidre Ziruzin applies uh, on a broader basis. The Imtim Tzaloma Pligi, and a second question is, if you say that they do argue, does the halacha follow him uh, or not? If the halacha follows the Rebbe Lozor Yaikiv, then we're saying that the concept of Nidrei Zeruzin is uh, applied to areas beyond commercial transactions. Uh, we have a little note that this particular question will be dealt with on Lafchof Dalit Omid Beis. But initially, the first question, that's why you can see we've, we've labeled it in our, in our Mark Gemoras with an Aleph and a Beis. The first question being, do the rabbis disagree with Rabbi Lezernaikiv to begin with? So, in order to deal with this, we have markings. And under the, under the Mivne heading on the side, also, we indicate that this structural note has relevance till Davchof Dalid Omid Beis. This is a ma'akav, an attempt to keep track of a give and take structure. The triangle with the point facing up, Hoychacha de Chachomim Cholkim. We have an attempt to show that the Chachomim disagree. And the inverted triangle would be a rejection, a dechia of whatever is being said. So the Gemara continues. Toshma Tisnan. Let's try to bring proof one way or the other from the following source. Ha'imer lechavero. We continue at the top of the Avchof Dalid. Kainom she'eni ne'ne loch im i ato noitel levincha kur shel chitin ushte chovios shel yayin. A person uh, vows Uh, we'll say A vows that he will accept no benefit from Mr. B if Mr. B does not uh, take uh, for his son a measure, a kur is a measure, a measure of wheat, of chitim, and two chovias, two barrels of wine. That's the vow. Once again, koinim she'eni nene loch im. I will not benefit from you if you don't take this from me for your son. This vow is subject to being rescinded, to being absolved, even without consulting with the sage. The uh, called the subject of the vow can say to the vower Kluma Marta Elo Bishvil Kvodi, did you not say this other than with the intention of honoring me? Zehu Kvodi, this is my honor, namely that I won't take from you uh, these items for my son. In other words, you're, you're trying to bestow honor onto me. In other words, you're trying to motivate me by saying that, that you will not accept any more favors from me if, if you don't accept a favor from me. In other words, from you to me. This kind of vow can be, simply be undone by the subject saying, listen, you're trying to honor me, aren't you? This is my honor that I don't accept anything from you. The uh, the Rashi third line from the top zok vodi yoser. This is my this is even more honor shelo akabel that I won't accept from you she'eni tzorich I don't need anything ukvar hutar haneder and with that the neder is absolved. Taimo the Gemara continues Taimo the Omar zehu kavodi. 
the the reason that this vow is absolved is because of this announcement on the part of the subject of the vow saying that, well, this is my honor. Your goal is to honor me. This is my honor by my not accepting your offer. Well, without that, then the nether would be binding. And what does that mean, the nether would be binding? It wouldn't be viewed as simply a nidrezi ruzin, as simply a motivational vow, but it would be a real vow. Money, who would author this? E, Rebbe Lezer ben Yankiv, nidrezi ruzin have. If you would associate Rebbe Lezer ben Yankiv with this source, it would, it would be a vow, it would not be a vow anyway. All it is is a is a neder lizarez nidrezi ruzin. All it is is a motivational statement that the the speaker will say the vow maker is so interested in his friend receiving some benefit from him from the speaker. It's purely motivational. So uh, the the source would not have had to say that the. Uh, the way to cancel the vow is by having the subject of the vow saying Zehu Kavodi. It would be Nidre Zeruz and wouldn't be a vow anyway. Ela Lav Rabbanon. Rather, it must be that this source is authored by the Rabbanon. And what then do we see? Shma Mino Pligi Rabbanon Ole. That the Rabbanon really do disagree with Rebbe Loser ben Yankiv, and that the concept of Nidre Ziruzin does not apply outside of, we will say, commercial concerns. The Gemara rejects this. I hope everyone notices that up till this point, we, we, we had it presented as attempt number one. It's basically one long point, and now a rejection. Li'oilam Rebelozer ben Yankiv he. The source above is really authored by Rebelozer ben Yankiv. Umoide Rebelozer ben Yankiv Baha'i. Rebelozer ben Yankiv will concede that in this particular case, that the Nidra Havi, it's a real nether, it's not just something motivational. The Omar lay, the Madir, the, the vower, is saying, Lo Kalbana. I'm not a dog, the Miss Hanino Minoch, that I'm always getting benefits, getting favors from you. Velo Miss Hanis Minoy, and you don't ever get anything from me. It's like a person that has a dog. He always takes care of the dog. It's pretty much a one way street. You buy him the, 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 uh, the, the dog food, and you bathe him, and comb him, and de lice him, and who knows whatever people do to care for their dogs. And the dog doesn't really do anything in exchange, certainly nothing tangible in exchange to the master. So the fellow over here is very serious in the vow. It's not a simple motivational vow, but rather he's taking a, a position uh, that even Rebbe Lozov and Yankov will concede is not simply, not purely motivational, but as we say, it's a, it's a, a vow with full intent. As we indicated before, this sukya, this discussion goes uh, quite a bit beyond the context of the Dafyomi framework uh, that we're featuring in the uh, Gemara markings. So we will pause at this point, but realize that in the next year, in order to pick up, one should be very familiar with what we've just been discussing. With that, we conclude our shiur for today.